In this video, we will look at one example related to the idea of self-similarity. Self-similarity is when an object is similar to itself in a way. Specifically, it's when you can take one part of an object and it will look exactly like the whole original object. It's similar to the original object. Now you often create self-similar objects through an iterative process. And the Cantor set in this example is an example of an iterative process, and specifically it's an example of a fractal, which is something that is often associated with self-similarity. So here it says the Cantor set is another example of a fractal. It consists of dividing a segment into thirds and then erasing the middle third. So we start out in stage zero with just one line. In stage one, we've divided that line into thirds and erased the middle third. In stage two, we've taken each of these lines and divided them into thirds and erased the middle third. In stage three, we've taken each of these four lines and divided them into thirds and erased the middle third. Stage four would keep repeating this, so we would take each of these eight blue highlighted line segments, divide them into thirds, and erase the middle third. So pretty quickly, it's going to get way too small for us to even try to draw on this paper. But the question is, determine the number of segments in each stage, and is there a pattern? So that's an interesting question. So let's make a table in order to investigate this and sort of record what we see. So what we want to compare is the stage number to the number of segments. So in stage zero, we just have one segment. In stage one, we have two segments. In stage two, we have four, and those are the ones that are highlighted in yellow. In stage three, we have eight. And those are all the ones that we've done so far. If we thought about stage four, what's going to happen? Each of these blue highlighted segments will be split into thirds, but then the middle third is erased, so two new segments are created. And they basically just like look like dots on this screen. But the idea is each segment essentially gets split into two. For each original segment, there are now two. So in this case, there's going to be two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, 14, 16. So in stage four, there are 16. At this point, and by just thinking about it, you might have noticed what the pattern is. As we go up each stage, we're multiplying by two. This is because each segment in the prior stage turns into two, two new segments in the next stage. So that's sort of what the pattern is, is there's always double the number of segments in each stage as there was in the previous stage. Um, it's also good to think about could we make a rule for if we wanted to know in stage 10 how many segments are there, how could we do that without having to go through and figure out how many are there in stage 8, in stage 9, and then stage 10. So in order to do that we need to figure out a connection between the, between the stage number and the number of segments. Now each of our numbers of segments are all powers of two. One is two to the zero, two is two to the one, four is two squared, eight is two to the third, because it's two times two is four times two is eight, so two times two times two is eight. Sixteen is two to the fourth, and you can see why that is because to get all the numbers, all we're doing is multiplying by 2 again and again and again. So by the time you've gotten to 16, we've multiplied by 4 or by 2 four times. So what that means is that the number of segments in each stage is 2 to the power of the stage number. So if you notice, in stage 0, there's 2 to the 0 segments. In stage 1, there's 2 to the 1 segments. In stage 2, there's 2 to the 2 segments, and so on. So that means the pattern would be the number of segments is always 
2 to the n, where n equals the stage number.